was great to see in the previous se uh, session uh, the amazing group of young people who have joined as part of the Caribbean Climate Justice Leadership Academy. Um, I've been very proud to be supporting um, this group of activists over the last two weeks and have learned so much uh, from them uh, as well as, 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 a, as a leader in that program. So I, I want to just tell a little bit of a story. Um, this session is... Um, the title of the session is What's the Most Remote Islands Teach Us About Sustainability? And I thought I'd, I'd start off with a little bit of a story um, to tell you why I ended up uh, working in this, in this area. So, a few years ago, I was in Samoa, and every few days I walked down to the docks in Apia, the beautiful capital of that South Pacific Island nation. And I was trying to make the onward journey to one of the most remote regions in the world, the territory of Tokelau. This um, remote archipelago is the epitome of what you might imagine if you think of Polynesia, beautiful sandy beaches, peaceful lagoons, and a very welcoming community. Um, and I was on a mission to get to these islands knowing that relatively few outsiders ever made the trip. No, given the extreme time commitment necessary to make it there and the uncertain transportation schedules. The only way to reach Tokelau is by boat. There's no airport. And the three atolls um, of Atafu, Fakaufu, and Nukunonu each have around 500 people living on them. Um, but it seemed that I'd been particularly unlucky as I'd arrived on the islands in the transitional period where the infrequent ferry, the MV Tokelau that serviced the islands, had been pulled into retirement. I'd heard stories about, from the islanders about the precarious ship's uh, problems and their pleas to the New Zealand government that administers the islands to provide a, a safer replacement. And unfor unfortunately, a more modern ship was on the way, uh, but unfortunately for me, it had not yet arrived. So in all I spent, almost a month in Samoa waiting to try and take this boat onto Tokelau. And in the end, I didn't even make it there. The reality of living in such an extreme location, right? And that might sound like an extraordinary amount of time for a failed mission, but for me, um, it was worth it because for, um, sorry, excuse me. For me, it was worth it. Um, and for many of the Tokelauans waiting alongside me, this was just a fact of life, of living in this such remote location. And there's certainly worse places to spend a month or, or so than Samoa. And I had the luxury of time up to, up to a point. But for me, it was worth the minor inconvenience of being stranded um, because I was interested in Tokelau's pioneering project, the Tokelau Renewable Energy Project, to become the world's first solar-powered nation. This was back in 2012. This was a noble effort to turn the islands to 100% solar power and replace the 1,500 barrels of diesel fuel that were imported every year um, with this cleaner source. And I wanted to understand how was this remote community, um, one of the most remote communities in the world, able to become one of the pioneers and a leader in sustainable energy. So in 2012, Tokelau had embarked on this ambitious mission to break free from its dependence on imported fossil fuels. The islanders joined forces with international organizations to implement an impressive solar power system. The photovoltaic panels and batteries were installed and a visionary movement was made um, that changed not just uh, the energy landscape, but daily life for the locals living there. The Tokelau's reliance on costly and environmentally harmful fossil fuels uh, dwindled, and this led to a substantial financial savings and increased resilience for the islands. This shift to solar energy was also not just illuminating a path for sustainability uh, for Tokelau, but also for other nations to follow. And it really changed life by giving, for the first time ever, 24-hour access to electricity for all the islanders, which, as you can imagine, is absolutely revolutionary. But this story had reminded me of another small island, which on the surface might seem a complete world away. But situated in the Inner Hebrides of Scotland, 
the Isle of Egg is special, like Tokelau, in that it also pioneered its own energy transition. Um, both islands had overcome major challenges to become pioneers to demonstrate that actually a community could be almost entirely powered by renewable energy. And actually in Egg, back in the 1990s, they were dealing with unreliable and very costly diesel generators, and they embarked on their own vision for energy self-sufficiency. The people of Egg turned adversity into opportunity, and they harnessed wind, water, and solar to become themselves 100% renewable energy powered. And the Isle of Egg is a success, um, is a, the Isle of Egg success is a testament to the power of this local collaboration and community-led projects in renewable energy that even the most isolated regions can make this transition. So then what connects Egg, the Isle of Egg, with Tokelau? Um, these two geographically remote islands on opposite sides of the world. Well, it's not just this transition, but it's the remarkable capacity for the revolution to happen in what might seem the most unexpected of places. But actually, why should this be unexpected? Islanders are, at nature, um, innovative. Um, and here we have an opportunity to, exp to compare two uh, different examples that ended up following a similar path. Now, I've been very fortunate to make a career from working with island communities and building so-called digital bridges to share stories and find ways to collaborate and learn from one another. And over the last decade, I've had the privilege to travel to hundreds of islands around the world on every continent. Now, you might think, of course, that Hawaii, Fiji, Tasmania, Barbados, and the Shetland Islands are quite different, and that is totally true. But there is a common strand and common stories that connect them, whether it's challenges around energy, a dependence on tourism, difficulties with waste management, or of course, vulnerability to climate change. Um, you might be surprised at how much such a diverse section of selection of islands have in common. Um, beyond the obvious differences in culture, in climate, in government, they share these many different features. And I started this organization, Island Innovation, in order to help build networks for islands to share resources and be able to learn from one another to build sustainable development pathways that work for them. As a purpose-led group calling for more representation of islands and recognition of island issues, we provide a platform to bring together island stakeholders um, at events like this um, and to, in order to learn from each other's experiences. So this idea of a global community of islands is something that really could have only emerged in the internet age, these places that have built a community connected together by remoteness. Now, to give you a few other examples of pioneering new efforts from islands around the world, the Azores Archipelago in Portugal has created a framework for sustainable tourism to ensure the islands are not degraded by mass tourism as many other places have. Rapa Nui, formerly known as Easter Island in um, the South Pacific, has created world-leading programs to help protect their indigenous culture and language. In Jamaica, a barrier has been placed across the harbor to collect plastic waste leaving the city and prevent it from drifting into the ocean. And at the University of Malta, a leading program for the study of islands offers scholarships to islanders from around the world to come and learn from each other and exchange these opportunities. You can see Stacy getting very excited as a, as a student in that program from Barbados. Um, now, this is what makes islands so important. The tight-knit nature of different island communities fosters collaborative problem-solving, and these islands can show the power of human ingenuities when put in extreme situations. Paradoxically, it's these extreme challenges that drive innovation. And whether it's a global pandemic, climate change, or the price of oil, um, the unfortunate reality is that it's island communities that bear the brunt of these global, global problems are then forced to find the solutions first and in the end shine a pathway for everyone else to follow. But what can these stories from islands teach us about innovation? Um, islands are often seen as microcosms of unique challenges, but they can be living labs to sh demonstrate innovative solutions um, that demand creative problem solving. In a world where sustainability and environmental concerns, as we can see here, are heavy on our minds, it's time to reframe our perception of islands. 
not just as a place for your holidays, um, they're a place that they're, they're, they're centers of dynamic innovation when it comes to uh, climate solutions. And they can offer invaluable insights into, coming, into overcoming the constraints that face all of us. So from renewable energy to waste management, islands can really demonstrate that innovation born out of necessity can lead to remarkable breakthroughs. These successes offer hope and inspiration to the wider world, signaling that with determination, collaboration, and a creative spirit, we can tackle even the most pressing challenges of our times. So, as we conclude our journey through these island stories, let us remember the lessons from the Isle of Egg, the lessons from Tokelau, that extend far beyond their shores. These islands are lighthouses of innovation, they shine a spotlight on these major global challenges that will affect all of us. But by recognizing the leadership of islands and the people that live on them, we can um, empower ourselves to learn, adapt, and apply the innovative spirit to shape a more sustainable and prosperous future for all. So I invite you to join this new global community of islands connected by technology and united in remoteness that can freely share knowledge and resources and learn from one another because together we're living in a global community of islands and embracing their shared commitments to build a sustainable future. Thank you very much for listening to me and I invite you to learn more at islandinnovation.co about the work that we've been doing, including the uh, Caribbean Climate Justice Academy, the Island of Hope and the other programs at COP. Thank you Extreme Hangouts for hosting me. Thank you.